Might as well call yourself Davy Gunface. So a few months ago, I documented all the war crimes that occur in Bloom's Tower Defense 6. The response to that video was pretty positive, and there were definitely a few of you who wanted more. There are some good suggestions, but the universe I decided to delve into next was World of Warcraft. However, instead of blaming characters you have no control over, such as Garrosh or Sylvanas, I wanted to blame you. Yep, you. So sit down and grab some popcorn, because today I'm going to go through all the classes in World of Warcraft and tell you exactly why you will be sentenced to an eternity in the Maw. Now a few disclaimers before we begin. Just like the last video, our world hasn't yet outlawed the existence of succubi or necromancy. This is because either A, those darn liberals are running an underground necromancy sex cult, or more realistically B, it just doesn't exist. But I'll try and equate everything to real life terms as best as I possibly can. And secondly, I'm only going to talk about abilities and talents that are in the game as of writing this video, discluding PvP talents and covenant abilities. I don't really care if you have an unobtainable trinket from 13 years ago that burns down the nearest orphanage. If I covered every single item and ability in the game's history, this video would come out just before Sylvanas' redemption arc. Lastly, and this is probably a mistake on my end, but I'm going to assume when you're using an ability, it's on an enemy combatant or an equivalent. As you'll come to see, quite a lot of abilities in this game can be perfectly legal, but using almost any of them on a civilian populace or other innocent peoples is a big no-no. If you're here for just one class, I'll put timestamps on screen and in the description, although I would advise watching the whole video. But without further ado, let's jump into our first suspect, the Death Knight. Look, I'm doing this list in alphabetical order, and I struggle to think of a more suitable candidate for the first class than the Death Knight. You commit dozens of war crimes before you even step foot into your capital city, and I really don't think you needed me to tell you that. Going with overall class abilities first, Death and Decay causes anything within its swirling mists to rot and decompose. Anything from flesh and bone to even the most durable stones and metals will wither and rot within seconds. Due to these implications, I can pretty safely prohibit this since chemical weapons with similar functions are entirely outlawed. Control Undead could potentially be qualified under slavery, depending on who or what you use it on. There are many undead creatures that have no sentience or free will, but there are also many more that are fully conscious and will be forced to do your bidding against their will. Blood Plague is... Well, it's a fucking blood plague, so any abilities that have this automatically get a bioterrorism no-no. Bone Shield as a mechanic could be entirely prohibited, depending on where you're getting the bones. We'll reiterate this in a future ability, but the remains of people who have died should be respected and protected without prejudice. If I die and my bones are whacking my loved ones to death, I'm going to be pretty unhappy. And most other Blood Death Knight spells either contract Blood Plague or utilize Bone Shielding, so I won't go over them too much longer. There are cases to be made with spells such as Blood Drinker, but TLDR, you're probably a bioterrorist. Many Frost Death Knight spells, such as Remorseless Winter or Frost Fever, I could pretty easily categorize under Cruel on Unusual Punishment due to the freezing's lengthy duration and wording of the abilities. For example, Remorseless Winter is said to surround the Death Knight with a swirling tempest of frigid air that drains the warmth of life from all nearby enemies. Depending on equipment your opponent wears, and when the freezing occurs, inflicting this would mean temperatures that vary between really fucking cold and impossibly fucking cold. In terms of strict prohibitions though, there's nothing else I can pinpoint exactly. The real world hasn't yet outlawed the existence of freezing people to death systematically, partially because nobody's tried it yet. And before we move on to the Unholy specialization, we should probably talk about ghouls. Ghouls can technically be utilized by all specs, but I wanted to save it for Unholy since they're the one that get the most benefit out of it. In game you can summon a ghoul with ease at any time and basically anywhere. I don't see anything wrong with raising the dead from the ground in a submarine, but in lore, the undead are created very morbidly. The Road to Damnation is a short story about Naxxramas and Kel'Thuzad that describes the process pretty well. And is, well in general, pretty disturbing. I don't know what else you expected from Naxxramas, 
but I feel like I could list off at least a dozen different laws this completely violates, but the most prevalent ones being the restriction on biological experiments, treatments of prisoners of war, and treatment of the dead. Even if for some godforsaken reason you consented to become a ghoul, it still wouldn't be legal, because in the great words of Evelina, you can't consent to being a pizza. So on that note, you may be thinking, well and whole is off to a good start, how ruthlessly do they violate the Geneva suggestion to death, in which I'm going to pull out my Uno Reverse card, and show you what abilities they have that are perfectly legal. Up next are the Demon Hunters, disciples of the betrayer Illidan Stormrage, who sacrificed everything they had to challenge the Burning Legion, including most of their friends and their social life. Jumping into the fray, Fell Rush and Infernal Strike is said to incinerate anything within its path. Incendiary weaponry is a topic that has very questionable and varying legality. In some cases, it is entirely illegal, while in others, only certain munitions are prohibited, while in others, it's only illegal if it inflicts intense suffering, and so on and so forth. For the rest of this video, I'm going to aim for middle ground and say it's illegal in any circumstance that results in superfluous injury and unnecessary suffering. For example, a spell like Fireball I could possibly deem as legal, since it does all its damage immediately and has no lingering effects. On the contrary, a spell like Immolate is a Warlock spell. Hopefully I don't really need to say anything else on the matter. Back to the two spells I was talking about, I'll cautiously advise them as legal, although I can't say the same for Immolation Aura, which I'm going to go ahead and deem illegal. Self-immolation has a long history as an extreme form of protest, but what those protesters didn't do was dash hundreds of kilometers an hour to inflict as much suffering as possible. With fun upgrades such as Burning Hatred, Agonizing Flames, Fallout, and many other names you can expect to see at your local Hot Topic, I wouldn't very easily consider this an extreme form of protest, rather a batshit insane way of incinerating your enemies. Quite a few other flame-related demon hunter abilities share the same fate, which I'll go ahead and display on screen now for the sake of time. Moving on to demon hunter sigils, they would almost qualify under landmines as a munition placed on the ground designed to be exploded by presence. However, they can detonate without anybody in the proximity, making them more of a timed explosive. We'll go over traps more in the Hunter segment, but I can't find an exact rule that would restrict these altogether. The XX and Sankaritos of World of Warcraft aren't as unlawful as I expected. On that note, there's literally no reason to include a tier list in this video, but I know that's a popular algorithm thing to do, so BAM. C tier. Fuck Death Knights. The Protectors of Life and Preservers of Balance, Druids are up next. For these, we need to talk about the most enjoyable of lunchroom topics, animal warfare. Joy. Let's get their two most prevalent forms out of the way first. Cats and bears. I know Zandalari druids exist, and where bears haunt my nightmares, and I'm immensely jealous of you, but since they all have the same abilities, it won't change the final verdict whatsoever. Cats were used in the last century, but their main role was to clear out mice and rats in trenches, ships, and other places that might attract vermin. So sadly, we haven't used tigers too much, or cheetahs, or lions, or really anything else. If you have a house cat, they're probably more fit to go to war than any of the beasts I just mentioned. And as for bears, they didn't show up in war as often as you'd probably think. However, there's one prominent example being Corporal Wojtek who was a literal fucking bear, who was enlisted in the Polish land forces that drank milk from old vodka bottles, just drank vodka, ate cigarettes, and marched with fellow soldiers on his hind legs. This actually happened. I can say with overwhelming confidence that Wojtek is the singular best creature that has existed, or will ever exist, and you'll never be able to persuade me otherwise. It's an objective fact. You can tell how confident I am because I said an objective fact, in place for an opinion I strongly believe in. If you think this isn't correct, you're objectively wrong. I'm objectively right, and objectively you should burn in the fire. I digress. There's nothing that any of these animal forms do that would be strictly forbidden, because most people prioritize the life of an animal under that of a human's. Is that ethical? I don't know. That's your choice to make. I'm not PETA, and I'm not going to adorn my Twitter merchandised morality police gear and cancel everybody who thinks for themselves. But myself personally, 
I'll ruthlessly murder anybody and everybody who dares to pose God Emperor Voitek. On to other druid abilities. I'll go ahead and throw in Moonfire, Sunfire, and Stellar Flare, as they all burn their target over a pretty lengthy duration. Lunar Inspiration allows you to use this as a cat, so don't do that. Just save yourself and your raid leader a hassle, and go with Predator or Sabretooth. And that... that's about it, actually. Turns out the Preservers of Balance, for the most part, actually earned that title. Good job, Druids. You did good. A tier. Another class that is associated with the Calls of the Wild are Hunters, but do they have the same fondness for life as their Druid counterparts? No, not really, actually. Let's go over traps first, because discussing traps is something that has never went wrong before, ever. Booby traps are very controversial, since there is an extensive list of regulations you need to follow in order to place them. The reasoning for this is depressing and sad, but know that just like all bad things in life, children are heavily involved with it. Steel trap is just fucked, because being entirely incapacitated and bleeding for 30 seconds isn't enjoyable. Hopefully I don't have to justify to you why I don't want to bleed to death via bear trap. Feign death could also potentially be a war crime if used in manipulative ways. If you play dead to try and escape death or being taken as a prisoner of war, that's okay. However, if you feign death and then proceed to take advantage of your enemy and attack them, that can very potentially qualify as perfidy and would be a strict violation. The reasoning for this is because of similar tactics, it became common practice to shoot the dead and wounded, even if they were begging for surrender. It was safer to be cynical and ensure their deaths, than to risk being flanked and slaughtered. This was a very prevalent issue, so shame to all of you arena hunters, because you're the exact reason we make these types of laws. Serpent Sting is an ability that fires a poison-tipped arrow. Weapons enhanced by poison, and more importantly for this example, projectiles enhanced by poison, are entirely illegal. On that note, Wildfire Infusion is also entirely prohibited. Wildfire Bomb is already forbidden since it coasts your enemies in Wildfire, but Wildfire Infusion makes the ability even worse. Pheromone Bomb could be qualified under Chemical Warfare, Volatile Bomb coats your enemies in Poison, and Shrapnel Bomb inflicts a stacking bleed onto your target, and depending on what material the shrapnel is, could potentially qualify under non-detectable fragments. To finalize the verdict on Hunters, are any of their pets illegal? Surprisingly, not too many. Hydras, worms, lizards, wasps, and scorpids all mention acid or poison in their ability name or text description. And what's great about this is since pet abilities are spread throughout the family, this tiny and chubby silkworm is on the same tier of savagery as this titanic and hulking worm of death. Final verdict, don't play Survival Hunter, both for the Geneva Convention and for your raid leader. Don't be a virgin either and play Marksmanship. Play the Chad Beastmaster. B tier for Beast Mastery is what you should play if you play Hunter. Hey, feature me, insert a laugh track here. The Masters of the Arcane and the Unwavering Seekers of Knowledge, mages are up next for our judgment. Firstly, and there's literally nothing forbidding or condemning this, but I'm banning portals. Why? Because of assholes who do portal roulette and open a portal to Dalaran Crater when I just want to go to fucking Shatterath. You know who you are. You deserve only the worst. Although, good news for all seven arcane mages out there, you're entirely legal. You have no spells I'd qualify as cruel and unusual, and no talents that make those abilities prohibited. So good job. You did it. Gold Star. On the exact contrary, fire mages. It's time to talk about fire again. Although I've already went over that all countries have differing laws, Fire Mage has something going against it that no other spec in the game does. There are several laws in countries such as the US that can allow incendiary weapons in scenarios where no other alternatives exist that cause less suffering. Here's the problem with that, Fire Mages don't really have access to many alternatives to fire, and I'm sure you can take a wild guess as to why. You can play a Demon Hunter without using Sigil of Flame. You can play Feral Druid without using Moonfire, but you cannot play a Fire Mage without fire. Fire Mages, from what I could tell, have access to a grand total of two alternative damage spells, Frostbolt and Arcane Explosion. And maybe I'm not keeping up with the M plus meta, but I sure as fuck don't really see any Frostbolt spamming Fire Mages right now. Oh wait, there's another spec I think. 
And yeah, Frost Mage. They're fine for the most part. The world is slightly behind Bloom's Tower Defense 6 in terms of raw technology, because we haven't introduced cryo cannons into the military. So the only problem you'll have is if any of your abilities fall under Cruel and Unusual. That's a lot harder for Frost Specs than other classes, because what dictates something as cold for people will drastically vary between equipment, apparel, geography, and personal preference. The answer will likely depend on your playstyle. If you're a PvPer who enjoys the concept of freezing and slowing people for 3 minutes straight while you're slowly killing them, you're a bad person, even outside the context of this video. On the other hand, if you're a raider and are shattering the damage meter with your 6 skills, you're probably okay. In summary, mages in game are actually pretty equivalent to mages in lore. If you're a prideful, wrathful, egotistical bastard, you can pretty easily be a war criminal. But if you're just somebody who wants to expand your knowledge on the unknown, you can get by just fine. Rolling up next is the Preservers of Balance and Harmony, the Monk. The Brewmaster Monk have quite a bit of fire abilities they can utilize, with Breath of Fire being quite possibly the most controversial incendiary tool we've discussed so far. The text indicates that the alcohol produced by Keg Smash is what inflicts the lingering flame. This is comparable to Molotov cocktails that utilize the same reaction, which are banned to manufacture and possess in many regions. Keg Smash, on its own, isn't strictly illegal, but with its interactions with Breath of Fire, it can very easily become so. And since Exploding Keg has that interaction built in, that is strictly forbidden. Outside of these abilities, though, nothing else the monk does is illegal. Fist Weaver and Windwalker both aren't outlawed, because hand-to-hand -hand combat has really no exclusive regulations. The only ability that concerned me was Paralysis, but on further inspection, the wording for it indicates that it's entirely temporary. Windwalker and Mistweaver join the Arcane Mage, Resto Druid, and Guardian Druid in the High Heavens as good law-abiding soldiers. However, just like real life, your one drunk bastard of a friend ends up ruining your entire name. A tier for why do I still have a tier list in my fucking video. Riding into the fray, the Paladin. Do these holy warriors of light uphold the law, or are they just as corrupt as the rest? <sighs> I, I mean, more than likely. Look, I've done this cool intro for all the classes, and look at where we are. So let's go ahead and look through their spells. Um, Blinding Light, because blinding your enemies is illegal. Wait, no, it's actually only if it's permanent. Huh, okay. Uh, what about Holy? Well, unsurprisingly, nothing here is illegal. So far, all the healers are perfectly fine, so there's nothing to comment on here. What about Retribution? I've always been a fan of the Lawful Good archetype. Um... No? Don't do this. Don't give me hope. Please. Protection Paladin, and, uh... Oh... Oh my god. I actually can't believe it. We're 48 minutes into this fucking video, and we finally found a class that's legal. I really didn't think it was possible. Good job, Paladins. You, you, you fucking did it. S tier. Five stars. Godspeed, you're the only fucking light in the darkness left in this world. Go get him, champ. Oh, uh, wait a minute, there's still five classes left to go. Uh, up next, Priests. That's it, that, that's the script, just Priests. Gave up 15 years ago, I'd advise you to do the same. Shadow Word Pain I'm going to go ahead and put under Weapons to cause unnecessary suffering, since it's a spell that inflicts the target with dark energy to inflict damage over time, and more so because its name is Shadow Word Pain. It's not a whole lot of interpretation you can do with this one. Mind Control is a spell that forces the target to do the caster's every bidding for 30 seconds, and that's just slavery. It's going to be entirely banned, but if you want to go the extra mile, feel free to ensure your subject gets death during the spell, and you can get charged with killing hostages as well. Holy Fire consumes a target in Holy Flames, and deals damage and applies a 7 second damage over time. And I swear to god, if a single one of you goes in the comments and types up, But Davy, it's not regular fire, it's holy fire, haha, <laughs> xddd, I'll be forced to leave an incredibly passive-aggressive reply under it. Go fuck yourself. 
purge the wicked does even have the benefit of the doubt of being holy fire, because it's literally just fire. And before we move on to Shadow, I'm going to go ahead and flex my power as the video creator and outright ban Leap of Faith. It's not prohibited in any way whatsoever, but I've had one too many priests make me commit suicide for me to let it go unpunished. Anyways, back on topic, Shadow Priest. There are quite a few shadow damage spells that are damage over time effects, and instead of listing them out like a normal person, I thought it would be funny to do it in song. Then I realized something. I absolutely despise singing. Perfect. So, uh, yeah, feel free to comment below if you think I should be a SoundCloud Raptor. And for the final verdict, in most circumstances, Priest would probably get an A tier, but the existence of the Shadow specialization knocks it down to a B. Bust out Bandicam.com, and turn on Blow Me Away at full blast, because up next is the Rogue. They're bastards. Let's get straight into it. Eviscerate is a finishing move that disembowels your target. Disembowelment is a pretty sinister mutilation, which is an incredibly severe breach of the Geneva Convention. Instant Poison is outlawed because, who would have guessed, it's poison, and poisoning weapons is an especially big no-no. So for the sake of time and my sanity, we're going to skip over all the abilities Rogue can utilize with Poison, since they'd all ultimately share the same fate. Gouge is said to gouge the eyes out of an enemy target, which would qualify it under a textbook example of mutilation, making it outlawed. On that note, mutilate. Take a wild fucking guess on what that is. There's also quite a few of abilities that have an excruciatingly painful damage over time bleed effect, such as Rupture that tears the target open, Kidney Shot inflicting severe internal bleeding, and strangulating your enemies to death with Garot. Garot? Garot? I don't fucking know, Garrot. There's only so many ways I can say the sentence bleeding, mutilation, and poisoning is bad, so to end this, I want to talk about Secret Technique. I'll be the first to say, I haven't played Rogue since Cataclysm, but when the fuck did you gain access to Shadow Clone Jitsu? Anime is strictly forbidden in the Davy Gunface YouTube channel. Be gone with you weeb filth. D tier for... At least we aren't Death Knights. Up next are the spiritual guys and wielder of the elements, the Shaman. Restoration Shaman is the last healer on this list, and just like every other healer except for those bastard priests, they're entirely good to go. For Earthquake and other seismic spells, Tectonic weapons have been in development in the past, although they remain mostly hypothetical. Despite this though, there's an international treaty that has been ratified by over 70 states to prohibit usage of environmental techniques to cause earthquakes and tsunamis. Because of this ruling, I want to prohibit all the seismic related spells that I'm displaying on screen. In terms of spells utilizing electricity, most real world weapons that utilize it are either non-lethal or heavily experimental. There are quite a few weapons that are currently in development by varying countries, including the good old US of A, but I have seen almost no usage outside of tests, so it's really hard to give a ruling on this one. And finally, in terms of fire spells, I'll go with my preset definition that I've done for all other classes, and qualify Flame Shock as the prime offender, due to it searing your target in flames for 15 to 21 seconds. Outside of that, however, all the fire spells are instant and don't seem to be designed to conflict cruel and unnecessary suffering, so I'll cautiously let it slide. I know shooting lava probably isn't good, but it doesn't set them on fire because of World of Warcraft logic. All in all, Shaman are in a pretty legally grey area, where most real world equivalents seem to be incredibly experimental or hypothetical. You can probably get away with playing them, although you do need to curate your specialization and talents if you want to be the true balancer of chaos. Up next are the Warlords of Battle and the Tyrants of the Battlefield, the Warrior. Firstly, Hamstring would be prohibited, since you're maiming your enemy to reduce their movement speed, which is punishable under mutilation laws. And well... 
We're one ability in, and here's where things get incredibly difficult for me. There's almost no laws or regulations that strictly prohibit blades and other varying melee weapons. This ultimately leads me to a predicament where the only charges I could prosecute them would be under great suffering and inhumane treatment. Looking at their ability text, words such as assault, overpower, vicious, unstoppable, and other kind of mean words show up pretty often. On a case-by-case -case basis, I'm pretty sure you could easily press certain charges, but right now it's just that. Case by case. As someone who doesn't like having such a disappointing answer, I want to formulate a proposal to all of you warrior mains. I'll go ahead and sacrifice Asmongold as the martyr for all of you out there who just want to do big dick damage. As your colored, pixelated, and fake numbers go up and up, you can always remember that Asmongold died for your sins, while he laments in the maw with Bobby Kotick for all eternity. Warriors get a B for big dick damage tier. Last, and by no means least, the wielders of forbidden spells and demonic hordes, the Warlock. Let's go ahead and jump straight into Ritual of Doom. Ritual of Doom requires five party members to summon a fearsome Doom Guard, at the cost of one of their lives being sacrificed. Both Demonology and Fell are considered a religion in Warcraft lore, due to Sargeras' prevalent history with the Demons of the Twisting Nether and the multiple practices they perform with varying spells. When it comes to religion and war, you have to respect their convictions and liberties, and cannot impair their freedom to adopt their religions or beliefs. Obviously, somebody such as a paladin serving the Holy Light, or night elves who worship Balloon, wouldn't be too fond of sacrificing their lives in this twisted and foreboding ritual. Subjugate Demon is a spell that could be prohibited for the same reasoning as Death Knight's control undead. Demonic creatures such as Vile Fiends or Vile Scourge could potentially be okay, but more sentient races such as imps or voidwalkers would qualify under slavery and would deem it entirely illegal. On that same note, let's talk about demon summons. To get the most controversial one out of the way first, succubi have multiple spells that would qualify under sexual violence, and I'd rather not touch that subject with a 28-foot pole, so just know that it's illegal. The voidwalker quote seemed to indicate that it cannot resist your call, and will mince its time on your plane of existence going as far to say that it's released at last upon its death. Imps seem to have a very similar disdain to servitude, although if you're a good person, you'll use the Fel Imp Glyph which is just a dude bro who wants to be your wingman. Fel guards also appear to be irritated by your commanding presence, although more in a I would kill you the very second I could irritated, and not a please god kill me irritated. Wrath guards on the other hand are fucking ballers. They just want to stab shit and even seem to anticipate their summoning when you dismiss them. Grimoire Sacrifice sacrifices your demon in order to gain a powerful effect, and since we established that some of the demons you summon are enslaved, this would qualify under the killing of hostages, making it entirely prohibited. And lastly for demons, Implosion shares the same ruling as before, but instead of a boring and lame sacrifice, Demonic forces suck all of your wild imps towards the target and cause them to violently explode and inflict damage. Although that's goddamn incredible, in this context, that's kind of bad. Basically, if you're using a spell to sacrifice your demons, such as Power Siphon, Implosion, or Grimoire Sacrifice, you're kind of a bad person. Demon lives matter, and I'm tired of pretending that they don't. The Affliction Tree has the primary design principle of afflicting as much painful dot effects on your enemies as possible. Spells such as Agony, Unstable Affliction, and Corruption could all easily be categorized under Cruel and Unnecessary Suffering. And lastly, Immolation is another painful damage over time effect, this time for the Destruction Specialization. Immolation, as well as all spells that inflict it such as Cataclysm or Fire and Brimstone, would be entirely prohibited. Overall, Warlock easily overtakes the Death Knight as the most sinister class in WoW, getting an immediate F tier. As for punishment of the highest order, the Warlock shall receive 4 slaps on the wrist, cause I'd be lying if I said I wouldn't miss their damage, it's not like we're actually going to prosecute these war crimes anyway, I kinda just wasted both of our lives. And... that's it. We've finally done it. That's every single crime that every class commits. I guess it's time for me to do an outro. I... I really fucking hate outros. Hey, uh, future me, feel free to do a cool fade to black.
Hey, here I am again, after that supposedly cool fade to black. I'd like to thank every single one of you for watching this video, and I'd greatly appreciate it if you commented below what class or specialization you play, because I want to know how evil my audience truly is. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, or don't. I have absolutely no power over you, but I'd really greatly appreciate it. And that's going to be all from me. I really do hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, Stay frosty, my friends.